Hello, this is Steve Goff. I'm a fluvial geomorphologist and owner of Little River Research and Design, where the clip you were about to see was made. Uh, we made these clips with US EPA 319 funding and uh, support from the Missouri Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. We're going to mine some gravel today with this demonstration. Uh, using an aspirator here, we're going to create a pit in the center of the channel. And immediately, uh, you can see, as uh, indicated by this yellow arrow, a head cut migrates upstream. And the channel is incising as this head cut moves through. By digging this pit, we've effectively increased the local slope and thus uh, the channel's capacity to move sediment. And uh, we're seeing a lot of erosion because of that. The channel is incising, and the sediment uh, from the in created by the erosion and incision is refilling the pit. Now, a pit like this also severely disrupts sediment transport continuity. And uh, a lot of sediment is entering the pit, but almost none is coming out. And this creates a hun hungry water effect downstream, which causes the downstream channel to incise and blows out riffles. You can see the channel is migrating towards the top of the frame upstream of the pit and leaving behind a series of terraces that, uh, that indicate uh, that it's down cutting. And you can see these features in the field upstream of a uh, gravel mined area, for example, and uh, use them to diagnose this process. The pit slowly refilling. We're going to see dye pulses move through that give you an idea of the relative uh, speed of flow in the channel and also of relative depths. The uh, darker the hue of the dye, the, uh, the deeper the flow. We often speed these clips up. Uh, we time lapse them. But this one uh, is running at that real time. It's not been speeded up at all. Now next we're going to demonstrate uh, floodplain uh, or bar pit mining, which is an alternative to mining directly out of the channel that can be much less damaging, uh, but probably can be even more damaging when uh, the pit is captured by the main channel, which happens pretty frequently especially when the pits are close to the active channel. Here we see the channel capturing that pit violently uh, causing a head cut to migrate upstream again as local slope is increased. The pit's going to rapidly refill here. Note the sediment blowing out downstream of the pit from the hungry water effect. So we've got incision upstream and incision downstream as well. And if this were a real world situation we would be creating a pretty awful uh, habitat, uh, unstable habitat situation throughout this entire reach. And of course, we've left behind the, uh, the channel that we uh, started with at the uh, bottom part of the frame. The material we're using t for this simulation is ground melamine plastic. It looks a lot like uh, coffee grounds, with the exception of its lighter color. And it uh, has a specific gravity of about 1.7, uh, only about half again as much as water. And so it gives us a much better simulation of these processes than sand or gravel would, which is the material you've traditionally seen in, uh, in stream tables. Now as the uh, simulation runs on, you'll see that uh, we will slowly regain sediment transport continuity. In other words, the sediment transport rate at cross sections all along the uh, the channel that you see here is roughly the same. And that's one definition of stability. It's one that I like. And as, uh, as the river settles down a little bit and reestablishes tr sediment transport continuity, you'll slowly see, uh, the dye pulses will help you see uh, the establishment of a, of a gently meandering single thread channel. Again, this is Steve Goff with Little River Research and Design where we made these clips. Uh, using an mriver river model. You can find us on the web at emriver.com. That's mriver.com. We hope you've enjoyed this and thanks for watching.